Today, I'm going to go over the origin of every original Kanto Pokemon, ranging from why Pikachu was fat, to Slowpoke stealing people's balls, to the funny origin behind Moltres. Let's do this. Alright, let's start with Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is actually based on Ivysaur, because way before Game Freak thought of the idea of evolution, Ivysaur was just a standalone original pocket monster. So basically, Bulbasaur was made to look like a baby Ivysaur. And along with that, to state the obvious, it is based on a horned frog with an onion plant on his back. Ivysaur. Ivysaur is the original, original starter Pokemon, because apparently it was made years before Squirtle and the Charmander lines existed, and was even used to pitch pocket monsters to Nintendo. So this Pokemon is an original, authentic pocket monster. Venusaur. Just like Bulbasaur, Venusaur is based on Ivysaur as well, and was made to look like a stronger version of it. And of course, it is based on a horned frog with a Ralphlasia flower on his back, and also a Periosaur dinosaur. Charmander. Charmander is based on Charizard, since Charizard was the first Pokemon to be created for this evolutionary line. And along with that, Charmander is also based on a mythical Salamander, which is a Salamander born in fire, and the Theropoda Dinosaur, since Charmander originally had horns on his back. Charmeleon. Charmeleon is probably based on a more mature version of Charmander, and it has some qualities to a chameleon, given by his name and the big horn on his head, since chameleons have that little flap thing on, on top of their head. Charizard. Charizard is simply based on the European dragon, even though it is not a dragon type. However, apparently this is by design because Game Freak wanted to surprise the player when they evolved the little salamander into an epic dragon. Squirtle. Just like Charmander, Squirtle is based on his original final evolution. And I say original because Blastoise wasn't even initially related to the Squirtle line, and even had his own pre-evolution that probably looked like this, since we only know what his back sprite looked like. And on top of that, Squirtle is of course based on a baby turtle and possibly a squirrel, since it does have a squirrel-like tail. War Turtle War Turtle is based on the Minogame, a legendary turtle that lived for 10,000 years and grew a tail made of seaweed. Blastoise Blastoise is probably based on Leonardo da Vinci's armored vehicle sketch, which was a concept for an early armored tank that was inspired by the shell of a turtle. And as you can see, it has a giant wooden shell surrounded by cannons pointing in all directions, which becomes more apparent in Blastoise's Gigantamax form. So I guess Blastoise's design isn't that random after all. Caterpie Caterpie is obviously based on a caterpillar, but what might surprise you is that the caterpillars is based on all nearly identical to it. Just look at them, they're literally real life Caterpies. Metapod Metapod is based on the cabbage white butterfly pupa, with his mean eyes probably deriving from the swallowtail caterpillar. Just look at it, that is one mad caterpillar. Butterfree Butterfree is simply based on the black vein white butterfly, and along with that, it might also be based on Venonat as its final evolution. Since, as the old theory goes, Metapod was supposed to evolve into Venomoth, while Venonat was supposed to evolve into Butterfree. And when you look at them together, it seems pretty believable. So who knows? Weedle Weedle is based on a wasp larva, and it becomes more obvious through his beta design where it's wearing a black top hat, which I'm going to assume is based on the little black spot on top of the larva's head. Kakuna. Okay, Kakuna is pretty messed up because it is based on the Peristoid Wasp Cocoon, which is a type of wasp that lays their eggs inside the body of a living insect. So basically every Kakuna you see in the Pokemon world is actually a hollow shell of another Pokemon that is still alive, while the Beedrill inside is eating them inside out, which might explain the arms that Kakuna used to have. Beedrill. Beedrill is simply based on the Asian Giant Hornet, or even a Yellow Jacket, either one, while its shiny colors might be based on Sweat Bees, which have a green metallic shell. Pidgey. Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot are all based on the House Sparrow, with some features from various birds like the Eagle and Osprey, and I guess a pigeon when it comes to their name, even though they are definitely not pigeons. They are also based on the Sun and Sky Egyptian gods Ra and Horus, which is apparent by their black markings on their eyes, and that the gods have falcon heads. So I guess Twitch plays Pokemon was onto something when they call Pidgeot Bird Jesus, because it is technically based on a literal god. Rattata. Rattata and Raticate are based on rats, and that's about it. Maybe a little guinea pig when it comes to Raticate. Spiro. Spiro is based on a sparrow, and that's it. Firo. Firo is based on the Peregrine Falcon, which, if you didn't know, is the fastest animal in the animal kingdom, flying at speeds up to 240 miles per hour, which is pretty apparent by Firo's high speed stat and his death you stating that it dies from the sky to catch its prey. Ekans. Ekans and Arbok are based on a variety of snakes and a cobra, which is apparent with their name spelled backwards. They are also based on the legendary Basculus, since they are in the Dragon Egg group and can learn the move Glare, which is a venomous serpentine dragon that is said to unlike people with just a stare. So if we ever get regional forms of these Pokemon, I would not be surprised at all if they became dragon types, because it would fit perfectly with their origin. Pikachu. Pikachu was originally based on the Japanese delicacy Dafuku, which is basically a rice cake stuffed with sweet filling, or a donut to Brock in the anime. But after a while, Giffrey thought it needed to be cuter, so they based it on a mouse instead, and then gave it its famous red pouches on his cheeks as a way for it to store its electricity, just like how squirrels do with their nuts. Like, walnuts, not nuts, nuts. 
So I guess it makes sense now on why Pikachu used to be fat. It's because it used to be originally based on a delicacy, just like Slurpuff. Raichu. Raichu is simply based on a kangaroo rat, with the possibility of it being inspired by a scrapped evolution, Gorochu, since originally Raichu was a middle stage Pokemon. But it's not confirmed which one came first. Sandshrew. Sandshrew and Sandslash are definitely based on a pangolin, which is basically a real life Sandshrew. Just look at it. And along with that, they are also based on a shrew, which is a close relative to hedgehogs and moles, but are venomous. Which is why the Sandshrew line can learn poison type moves like Poison Sting and Poison Jab. Nidoran. Nidoran, Nidorino, Nidorina, Nidoking, and Nidoqueen are all based on rabbits, porcupines, and rhinoceroses. Yes, Nidoran male and female are rabbits, if you've never noticed. Very spiky rabbits. Along with that, Nidorino and Nidorina might also be related to a Hyrax, which is a small rodent that is genetically more closely related to larger mammals like elephants and manatees, which might explain why these small rodents become huge rhinoceros Pokemon. And lastly, the entire line might be based on the mythical Moon Rabbit, which if you look closely at the moon, you can kind of see a rabbit within the dark markings, which might explain why these Pokemon evolve with the Moonstone. They are basically space rabbits. Clefairy. Clefairy and Clefable are definitely based on fairies and pixies, since they are playful magical creatures with wings. But more interestingly, they too may be based on the moon rabbit, since they do have long rabbit-like ears and are supposed to be extraterrestrial. So basically, these Pokemon are alien moon rabbits that invaded Earth, which makes them even more cute. Vulpix. Vulpix is obviously based on a red fox, but what's more interesting is that it's also based on the Kitsune, which is a fox in Japanese folklore that is said to have several tales with supernatural powers, like breathing fire. And when these mythical foxes reach an advanced age, like 100 years old, they ascend into a spirit form, which may explain why Vulpix and Ninetales naturally learn ghost and psychotype moves. Ninetales. Ninetales is also based on a red fox and the Kitsune, but with a little more lore to it, because it is based on the Kyubi no Kitsune, which is a more powerful Kitsune that is known as the Ninetale Fox, whose fur turned the gold when it reached 1000 years old and grew a ninth tail. Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff are simply based on rubbery balloons and bouncy balls, while also might be inspired by a musical plush toy that helps children fall asleep. But guess what? These Pokemon may also be based on the Moon Rabbit, because Wigglytuff does grow some rabbit-like ears, which means that every generation one Pokemon that evolves with a Moonstone is some kind of rabbit, which is something I never noticed until just now. Zubat. Zubat and Golbat are based on bats, vampires, and vampire bats, since they feed on blood and get burnt by the sun, which is something I never knew until just now after reading their Pokedex entries. And the reason why they're a poison type is probably due to the fact that bats are known to spread deadly diseases, like rabies. Oddish. Oddish is based on a mandrake, which is a plant with roots that sometimes look like a human figure. And the fact that it can learn the move Sleep Talk may be based on the legend that mandrakes emit a deadly scream when uprooted, just like from Harry Potter. Oh, and it's also based on an onion, so it's probably a close relative to Bulbasaur. Gloom. Gloom and Vileplume are not only based on mandrakes, but also on the Rafflesia flower, which is the world's largest flower that is notorious for its foul odor, which apparently smells like rotten flesh, which explains why Gloom is known for its extremely bad smell. Paris. Paris and parasites are both based on lobsters, but also on the concept of an ant being infected with mushroom spores that take control of the ant's brain and sprout from their head and body. Yes, this actually exists. Mushrooms can literally take control of ants. So if mushrooms became more deadly in real life, we might all end up like Paris and parasites. Vidinat. Vidinat is probably based on a flea, since it has piercing mouth parts around body and the tendency to hop around on its hind legs, which explains why it learns to move leash life naturally. Venomoth. Venomoth is simply based on the swallowtail moth, and that's about it. I couldn't really find anything else. Diglett. Diglett and Dugtrio are both based on moles, and also from the moles from the arcade game Whack-A-Mole, which makes so much sense now. And it's even apparent when Diglett is low on health in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. It literally says, please don't whack me on the head. Meowth. Meowth is based on the Japanese Lucky Cat, also known as the Beckoning Cat, which is a symbol in Japan that means several things. In Meowth's case, since it's a white cat holding up his left paw, it represents purity and happiness. And for his shiny colors, when it becomes a bit more golden, it then represents intense wealth and prosperity, which I think falls more in line with Meowth, since it's known for payday and all. Persian. Persian is simply based on large cats, like leopards and pumas. And the gem on his head is probably based on a carbuncle, which is a Latin American mythological beast that has a jewel on his forehead. And the jewel is said to bring good fortune and good luck to whoever owns it. Psyduck. Psyduck is based on a rubber ducky, and his psychic abilities is based on his coloring and Golduck's name. Because if you didn't know, gold in Japan is often used to symbolize psychic powers, which is why Sir British Badge is gold and that gold gummies are loved by psychic Pokemon. Golduck. Golduck is simply based on a duck and a platypus, with probably a hint of the Japanese folklore creature, the Kappa, which is basically a water-dwelling animal. Mankey. Mankey and Primeape are both based on baboons, which are monkeys that are known for their anger. And along with that, they are also based on snub-nosed monkeys, which are known for, well, their snub-noses. 
Growlithe. Growlithe and Arcanine are both based on a Komenu, which is a Japanese statue depicting a lion dog that is said to bring good luck and protection, which becomes more apparent with their Asuian forms when they become a literal rock-type Pokemon. Poliwag. Poliwag is simply based on a tadpole, and the sprawl pattern you see on his belly represents a tadpole's intestines, since their intestines are visible through their transparent skin. So that's the only thing you see there is actually its guts. Poliwhirl. Poliwhirl and Poliwrath are also based on tadpoles with their transparent bellies, but along with that, they also represent a frog who underwent metamorphosis, since they gained arms. Abra. Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam are all based on a fox-goat hybrid, which are two animals that are commonly associated with magic. And for Abra's and Kadabra's names, they are based on the magical chant Abra Kadabra, like the death unaliving spell in Henry Potter. Kadabra. For Kadabra, the star and line designs that you see on his head and stomach are actually based on Xena cards. And if you didn't know, Xena cards used to be used to test someone's extrasensory perception and their clairvoyance, which makes a lot more sense now because I always thought they were just random squiggly designs on Kadabra. Alakazam. And for Alakazam, I'm going to say allegedly here just, just in case, but it might be based on the magician Yuri Geller, who is known for his trick of bending spoons. Oh, and also his long mustache might be based on a Chinese dragon, since they are often associated with magic. So we have a goat-fox-dragon hybrid here. Machop. Machop, Machoke, and Machamp are all based on a bodybuilder and a wrestler, with a hint of reptile as well. Yes, a reptile. Ever notice that Machop has a tail? Yeah, mind blown. And for Machamp, it could also be based on the Hindu god Vishnu, since it has blue skin and four arms. Bellsprout. Bellsprout, Weeping Bell, and Victory Bell are all based on the carnivorous pitcher plant, which is a plant that literally traps and eats insects alive by dissolving them in its acid. Tentacle. Tentacle is based on the Kurukia Barnesi jellyfish, while also being inspired by invading aliens, since jellyfish do look unearthly. Tentacruel. Tentacruel is based on a jellyfish as well, but also the Portuguese Man of War. Yes, that's what this organism is actually called, the Man of War. And all I'm going to say about this creature is that it's not just a single creature, but multiple creatures, smaller creatures, known as zooids, that make up this huge colony of this Man of War. Geodude. Geodude, Graveler, and Golem are all based on, well, a golem, which is simply a mythological creature in Jewish folklore that is made up of clay and brought to life with magical words. And along with that, they may also be based on a world turtle, which is a creature in folklore that's said to hold the world on its back, which may be apparent by Golem Shell looking like Earth's tectonic plates. So yeah, these guys are basically turtles, and Geodude is based on a dude. Ponyta. Ponyta and Rapidash are simply based on the fiery steeds that gods from several mythologies would ride on with their chariots, like Helios of Greek mythology and Skin Foxy of Norse mythology. And along with that, their shiny colors are based on the fact that blue fire is hotter than red fire. So technically, shiny Ponyta and Rapidash might canonically be stronger than their counterparts. So get the shiny hunting. Slowpoke. Slowpoke and Slowbro are pretty original pocket monsters, but they do have some characteristics of a hippo, a salamander, and of course a hermit crab. But if you want to get way more deep, they may be based on the Saze Oni, which is a sea creature in Japanese mythology that disguises itself as a woman who steals the balls of pirates. And as the story goes, she traded their balls back for their gold, which plays into the punchline of gold was bought with gold, since in Japan, men's privates are sometimes referred to as golden balls. Oh, and fun fact, when you trade a Slurbo to gold and silver, it will always be holding a golden leaf. So I guess Slurbo do be stealing people's balls though. Magnemite. Magnemite and Magneton are simply based on magnets, and that's about it. They can also be based on invading aliens because they do evolve into a UFO and can be found on Route 39, the same route where Rimu Farm is located, which plays into the fact that aliens and UFOs are known to kidnap cattle. Farfetch. Farfetch is based on the Japanese saying, a duck comes bearing spring onions, which basically means that it's an easy target or a golden opportunity, which makes sense because Farfetch is a living walking meal. It's kind of Farfetch. Duduo. Dudu and Dudrio are based on an ostrich, even though ostriches can't fly and only have one head. But fun fact, according to the Pocket Monsters Encyclopedia, Dudu was discovered three years prior to the original games, and it is believed that his double head is a recent mutation. So I guess when you unmutate a Dudu or Dudrio, it's, it's basically an ostrich that can fly somehow. Seal. Seal is based on a seal, and Dugong is based on a Dugong. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Grimer. Grimer and Muck are simply based on a pile of living sludge, while also might be inspired by a Dorotobo, which is a one-eyed three-fingered creature that rises from the mud of neglected overgrown rice fields. And also Muck is based on Shelder. Shelder and Cloyster are both based on clams, with Shelder's tongue representing a clam's foot and Cloyster's head representing a black pearl inside a clam's shell. Ghastly. Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar are all based on generic ghosts that you might see in cartoons, while Haunter and Gengar might also have some inspiration from the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, since the cat has the same evil-looking grin and can vanish at will, and it's purple. 
Onyx. Onyx is based on an earthworm, with its design being a pun on the earthworm's name. And the fact that Onyx's lifestyle consists of living underground and ingesting massive amounts of soil while tunneling gives more credence to this idea. Drowsy. Drowsy is based on the Japanese mythological creature known as the Baku, which are tapir-like animals who eat the bad dreams of sleeping people. And these creatures are supposed to be protectors, so you actually want to have a drowsy around you when you sleep. So they're actually good Pokemon despite being used by Team Rocket. Hypno. Hypno is simply based on the Boogeyman, which explains its history of kidnapping children, because as the saying goes, the Boogeyman will get ya. Krabby. Okay, you're not gonna believe this, but Krabby and also Kingler are based on crabs. I know, mind blown. Voltorb. Voltorb and Electrode are pretty original Pokemon because they are based on Pokeballs. But if you want to get more sophisticated, they might also be based on the strange phenomena of ball lightning, which is exactly what it sounds like, a ball of lightning that flickers in the sky for a few seconds, rarely ever seen. Oh, and they're also based on bombs. Yeah. Execute. Execute is based on all sorts of things, like seeds, eggs, coconuts, and even as a visual pun of the eggplant fruit. Executor. Executor is based on a coconut tree, but more interestingly, it is also based on the Japanese monster, the Jinmunju, which is a tree in Japanese folklore that grows human heads that are always smiling, which I'm not gonna lie, is pretty creepy. Cubone. Cubone is based on the thought of how sad it would be for a Pokemon to die in the Pokemon world. Marowak. Marowak is loosely based on a bipedal dinosaur, and also on primitive cultures where the people would wear skulls as decorations and use bones for weapons. Hitmon Lee. Hitmon Lee is based on Bruce Lee, while Hitmon Chan is based on Jackie Chan, which is apparent by their names and fighting styles. Lickitung. Lickitung is based on something pretty nasty. It's based on the Akaname, a creature in Japanese folklore that likes to lick the filth out of bathrooms with his giant tongue, which explains why Lickitung has a bad habit of licking dirty things clean, which is just nasty. And as for his body, it's probably based on a chameleon of some sort. Coughing. Coughing and wheezing are both based on the pollution emitted from New York and Los Angeles, which is why their original names were NY and LA. And along with that, they're also based on floating naval mines, which are live bombs that explode when a boat or submarine makes contact with them, which explains the crossbones on Coughing's body. Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn is based on Rhydon, because it was made to look like a pre-evolution of this Pokemon, and obviously is based on a rhinoceros as well. Rhydon. Rhydon is based on a kaju, which in Japanese is a term that's commonly used for giant monsters, like Godzilla. And along with that, it's pretty much completely original to Pokemon because it was the first Pokemon monster after all. Chansey. Chansey is based on literal luck. Since its Japanese name is Lucky, the fact that it lays lucky eggs, and that it's known to be very rare. Tangela. Tangela is based on Medusa, a Gorgon of Greek mythology whose hair is made up of snakes. As for its red shoes though, I have no idea. Maybe Dorothy from Wizard of Oz? Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan is based on a cartoony kangaroo, because in some cartoons, kangaroos are depicted as boxers, which explains why his original signature move was Dizzy Punch, the punchy move with cartoony birds popping out. Along with that, parts of his body is based on Mongolian laminar armor, and his name is based on the Mongolian conqueror Genghis Khan. Horsey. Horsey and Seijer are based on seahorses, of course, and also the Japanese myth that if a seahorse lives for a thousand years, it will become a dragon. So I guess all Kingdra around are a thousand years old. Goldeen. Goldeen and Seeking are simply based on goldfish and royalty, with Goldeen being a queen and Seeking being a king. Staryu. Staryu and Starmie are based on the necklace starfish as well as literal stars in the sky, since they can communicate with outer space. Along with that, they might also be related to the Ultra Warriors from the Ultraman series, where the warriors have gems on their chest that will start flashing when they're weak, just like how Staryu and Starmie's gems do in the anime. Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is obviously based on a mime artist, and along with that, the reason why I gained the fairy typing is because it could be based on a modern elf. Scyther. Scyther is based on a lot of things as well. It is based on a praying mantis, a reptilian creature, ninjas, and even the dromaeosaur dinosaur. Jinx. Jinx is probably based on Gunguro, which was a fashion trend in Japan in the mid-1990s where women would get a dark tan, light hair, heavy makeup, and wear colorful flashy clothing. And along with that, it might also be based on the Yama Uba, who was a yokai, a Japanese spirit who was depicted as wearing a red kimono, having whitish blonde hair, dark colored skin, large lips, and the ability to control snow. Which may explain why Jinx just kind of disappears when it faints in Pokemon Stadium. It could be that it's actually a spirit. Electabuzz. Electabuzz is based on your classic Japanese Oni, a horned ogre that wears tiger skin as clothing while having the power to control thunder and lightning. Magmar. Magmar is partially based on boobies. No, not that kind of boobies, but the booby seabird, which is apparent by Magmar's Japanese name, Boober. And as for his human-like appearance, it's probably based on a Karura, which is a fire-breathing creature in Japanese folklore that has a human torso and a bird-like head. Pinsir. Pinsir is based on a stag beetle, which is evident by the fact that Pinsir is known as a stag beetle Pokemon. Tauros. Tauros is based on a raging bull that is being whipped by a ringmaster. 
Magikarp. Magikarp and Gyarados are both based on the Japanese legend of a carp swimming up a waterfall and jumping over a dragon's gate to become a dragon. And this becomes apparent by how Magikarp evolves in the original Pokemon Snap. Lapras. Lapras is based on the Loch Ness Monster, with some characteristics of the Plesiosaur Dinosaur. Ditto. Ditto is based on the iconic smiley face, and this was revealed by Janice Masuda and Kisugamori themselves in an interview. Eevee. Eevee, Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon are all original designs by Game Freak. Since the creator of Pokemon, Satoshi Tajiri wanted a Pokemon that could evolve into multiple types. So, the artist based these original Pokemon monsters on foxes, dogs, and cats. Porygon. Porygon is based on a joke by Satoshi Tajiri, because during the development of Pokemon, several of his peers told him that he was too late in making a Game Boy game, and that he should instead make a 3D game with polygonal graphics. So in spite, he created Porygon out of irony, which is basically a paper crate that has been rendered in 3D computer graphics. Ammonite. Ammonite and Amistar are both based on the prehistoric Ammonite. Kabuto. Kabuto and Kabutops are both based on the prehistoric Trilobite, and also the still-living Horseshoe Crab. And along with that, they are also based on the Kabuto Helmet and a Samurai. Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is simply based on the prehistoric Pterodactyl. And fun fact, Aerodactyl's mega form is actually its prehistoric original form, which is based on Atavism, where an ancestral genetic trait reappears after being long lost throughout the generations. Snorlax. Snorlax is based on the Game Freak staff member Koji Nishino, and also based on a hibernating bear. Articuno. Articuno is probably based on the Chinese mythological bird, the Fanghong, which is essentially a phoenix. But Game Freak probably made Articuno and ice type to create the legendary trio, and to represent each of the four seasons, with Articuno representing winter. Zapdos. Zapdos is based on the Native American legend of the Thunderbird, a spirit of thunder, lightning, and rain that took the form of a giant bird, who creates thunder by flapping its wings. Moltres. Moltres is clearly based on a phoenix, but more importantly, its design may be based on a rubber chicken. Because if you remove its flames, it looks exactly like a rubber chicken, and I love it. Dratini. Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite are all based on Chinese dragons who bring good luck. Along with that, they are also based on the Imugi, a snake-like creature in Korean folklore that is said, after a thousand years of living, a jewel will drop from the sky, and if the Imugi catches it, they will become a true dragon. Which explains why Dragonair has a jewel on his neck, and the reason why Dragon Knight looks so different from his pre-evolutions. It's because it becomes a true dragon. Mewtwo. Mewtwo is based on the classic gray alien, with some characteristics of an embryo that has underwent mutation. And of course, it's based on Mew, because it is Mewtwo. And finally, we have Mew. Mew is not based on a cat's meow, or even a cat at all. It's actually the personification of the occurrence of mutation, which explains why it's the ancestor of all Pokemon. It pretty much evolved into every Pokemon we know today through evolution and mutation. And if you haven't noticed until just now, its name is Mew for mutation. Mind blown. But it do be looking like a cat though. By the way guys, I'm being released in an official trading card game called Nostalgix. And if you want my card, you can pre-order it using the link down below. Go get it now. And be sure to watch my one fast for every Kanto Pokemon video right here.